Uh, some of you guys may or may not be aware or tracking any on the Facebook page. Um, I just got back from a due diligence trip on the uh, east coast or the farthest point, but the Texas, we're looking at a couple of properties, uh, doing some work on some properties. And so got a chance to, uh, uh, to go scout and go miss all of the snow and the inclement weather, which was amazing. Although it was 20 degrees when I got into Maryland. So that was the coldest that somebody who's been living out in Hawaii for the last decade plus has experience and I had to buy all new winter clothes. So to you guys anywhere cold, <laughs> I, I, uh, I feel for you, but, uh, yeah, we're walking through some of the slides. So, um, so yeah, so this is one property, a uh, hundred units over in San Angelo, Texas, Casa Rio. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the pictures here and some different things that I was, uh, taking a look at here. All right. So, a few different things, you know, obviously this is a, a different kind of build style, build quality than we would typically see maybe here locally. Uh, a lot of brick facades, which is great. Uh, great for a few different reasons. Great because uh, it's really durable, uh, which is great. Um, you know, much more resilient than uh, maybe let's say uh, wood siding or vinyl siding uh, can definitely take the abuse of the elements and still, uh, still sit, uh, you know, stay in good condition. Um, Yes, so this is a C-class property. Um, uh, age of the property was uh, what, 70s? 70s build, late 70s? Um, yeah, it was like 77 or 79, I think. Yeah, 77, I wanna say. Um, so, you know, at, at this age of range, you know, you start to look for, for key things. You know, plumbing's always gonna be an issue, but, you know, we'll kind of get to some of that here in a few, some of the pictures later. Uh, but here in some of the pictures, you'll see some of uh, what we're looking at in terms of, you know, signage you can see there. You know, and this is just a, the typical example of uh, a property that's, um, you know, neglected, uh, at least from an aesthetic standpoint. And usually if they're, if they're neglecting uh, the aesthetics, then, you know, you're likely going to see other issues as well. So you can see the property is not called Asa Rio. Uh, the property is actually called Casa Rio. Um, but they have got a giant C that has not uh, been placed there on the side of the building in quite some time. Um, that upper right hand picture there, you can see a couple of the AC units that we will be needing to uh, replace and are in desperate need of some repair and some improvement there. Uh, I don't think we've got a shot. Yeah, that one doesn't have any uh, plumbing there, but, uh, but yeah, you can get an idea of, uh, you know, the, the, the condi general condition of the AC units. Now these are, you know, something important to note for a lot of the air conditioning units too. So these are central units. Uh, these are their exterior compressors. Um, something you always want to take note of is the different types of refrigerant charge on these. So the older, older uh, style units like these ones were uh, what they consider R22 uh, refrigerant in the inside of them. So they did phase out production of that uh, last year. So what that means for us as investors is the longer that we go uh, past the production, the higher likelihood that it's going to be that these things will need more and more maintenance for one. If they do experience leaks and whatnot, the refrigerant is going to be much more expensive to, to obtain. Uh, so, you know, if you do have leaks and whatnot, um, you're likely on this, the, the, the higher side in terms of uh, ongoing maintenance. So you definitely want to stay on top of maintenance for these. And, you know, typical uh, lifespan of these things, 15 to 20 years. So you want to get an idea of, you know, kind of age uh, of the units. Most of these units were, uh, and you can kind of tell by just their general condition, you know, rusted cages, you know, bent up fins and whatnot, um, just mismatched. You can tell they've kind of just piecemeal replaced these things. Um, you know, 15 to 20 years is kind of the lifespan for these guys. So you want to make sure that you're budgeting in uh, replacement costs for those and at absolute minimum uh, servicing if they haven't been done, you know, if they haven't kept up with service. So those are, those are some things here. Uh, something else too you can see in these pictures too is just the overgrowth of the vegetation line, the trees. Um, I think we have some shots in there later, but um, you can see in the lower left-hand picture there, um, trees can be really damaging. Uh, now this is winter time there, so you know they're they're without you know leaves and whatnot. But um, the overgrowth of trees and how inexpensive it, it can be just to trim them back versus the damage they can cause. Let's say to roof coverings. Um, you know, far outweighs uh, the replacement cost and potential damage to, you know, countless units. So you want to be able to trim all of this stuff back uh, away from buildings. Ideally, it's like 10 feet away, just because when winds pick up, you know, they can blow leaves uh, or, or uh, blow uh, branches and whatnot towards the property. They can really cause a lot of damage to your roof coverings, to fascia, um, you know, which of course 
just downward spiral. It's definitely not like our skin. It does not heal. Uh, so, you know, if you do experience some damage to a roof covering, so much easier to have uh, water uh, intrusion uh, into units, uh, you know, uh, start damaging soffits, which we saw, you know, at this property. Um, you can cause a lot of other issues. So that's the kind of stuff. Hey, you know what? Trim them back. Just have that as a part of your kind of ongoing uh, maintenance to, you know, property. And this, that holds true for, you know, multifamily, residential, um, unless you're dealing with a condo, um, you know, you want to stay on top of, uh, you know, the vegetation growth. Uh, one of the biggest ones is, uh, you know, pests as well. Um, you know, you can see this building is brick, so you wouldn't normally think there's like termite issues. Well, the termites aren't climbing up the brick a lot, you know, they're, they're being introduced from like the trees. So... The, you know, they're coming over from trees, a lot of rats and stuff like that will come off the trees onto the property, yep. onto the roofs and stuff like that too. So um, not just damage, but also pest, uh, pest infestations. Yep. Can happen. No, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, and this definitely goes for, you know, our folks in Hawaii. Um, I look at a lot of property here and usually if I can see, um, you know, tree overgrowth or hedge lines, bushes and that kind of stuff, if they're, you know, hugging the, the building, and, you know, you've got somebody that's complaining about ants and, you know, just kind of everyday kind of pests in the house. That's the first place I go to look, you know, just like, hey, do you have bushes and all kinds of stuff? Oh, that's the wine, geez. Uh, do you have bushes and stuff, overgrowth, vegetation, you know, close to the house? Um, and it's like hard because, they're, you know, people here want to have the plumeria trees and, you know, you want to have all of the, you know, the the nice, uh, you know, uh, flowers and vegetation growth. It's like, yeah, they can, they look great, but you got to keep them, you got to keep them trimmed away. Um, all right. So here, here we get a good shot. Um, uh, more of the roof line, more of those trees and, and some of the damage. I know I've got some better pictures in here, but I, I may not have included them in here, but in that lower left-hand corner, you can already see um, some of the damage that those tree branches have caused to the roof covering uh, just right there on the edge of the, right above the drip edge. Uh, there were some other areas where it had, had caused quite a bit more damage to the fascia as well. So those are going to be repairs. And tough to tell because, you know, on the other side of the building, that upper left-hand picture, you can see, hey, roof looks great. You know, the roof the roof covering itself looks awesome. But then, you know, just a couple of years of, of tree overgrowth, hey, you can introduce, all, you know, all that money you just spent on that nice, pretty, brand new, you know, 30-year roof, you know, can go down the toilet because, you know, your trees got overgrown and, and started causing a bunch of damage. Um, upper right hand corner, if that looks a little funky, you guys may have seen, you know, obviously that fisheye kind of uh, uh, deal. This is one of the tools that I'll use anytime I'm looking at property is um, if I, if for some reason, it just some, sometimes it's just the works this way. Um, it's really difficult to get on top of a roof. Um, then we'll get kind of a camera on a stick. Ideally, it's something like this where it's a 360 camera and you can get really good eyes on, uh, you know, all the kind of uh, the lines of the roof. You can get it up, you know, quite a quite a distance. So that's what I was using here. That's why the, the image looks a little wonky, uh, but at least that way you can get a, a better idea than you could otherwise for, um, you know, for getting a general condition of the roof. This this would work. A drone would work. Um, ideally, we're able to walk a roof, but if that's just not possible, then this is kind of the next best thing. Uh, lower right image uh, shows a railing here, I, and I see this all the time, uh, but it's of course something we want to be aware of. Uh, looking at property to acquire. Um, looks like, you know, uh, looks like a railing. You're like, okay, well, what's, you know, what's the problem here? Well, the issue with these railings is that they're, they got a pretty wide span on them, don't have enough support at the ends. And so these things were kind of, you know, they're not really going to provide the support that you need. Plus the spacing on the spindling is too wide. Uh, it should be four inches. Uh, the reason they put that in place is for uh, concerns for young children, small pets, uh, four inch gap, you know, uh, a child's head uh, can fit through that. And so if you've got residents that have, you know, young children, babies and whatnot, you get a baby or a young child that falls off of, uh, you know, a second story balcony, obviously that becomes a big issue. And so that's not the kind of stigma that you want at your property. That's not the kind of safety that you want in your property. So uh, that's gonna be something of note here. Uh, that's what this picture was, was, uh, was showing there. And another point on that, whenever, whenever it's like safety concerns or, or possible code violations. So this property most likely will be grandfathered into the original code it was built under, right? Whatever 1997 or 1977 code. So according to the code official, this may not ever need to get updated. Um, the insurance company could care less. They might say, 
you're going to upgrade that and we don't care what the code is. It's going to be up to code now um, or we're going to cancel your policy. So that's something where if you're in the situation and looking at this, don't just take, you know, the broker's word for it. Like, oh, you're just grandfathered in. You don't worry about those steps or don't worry about the, you know, the railings. Uh, you're going to be grandfathered in. It's going to be fine. You know, that may be true at the city, not the insurance. So you definitely check your, um, you know, cover your bases there. Yeah, for sure. And then the, um, uh, like that too, to, to Vince's point, um, the reason that they may um, change the code, it, usually when they change the code, it has to do with, because somebody got hurt. And so, you know, when somebody hurt, when somebody got hurt, when somebody died, then they had to say, okay, you know, the, the IBC, the, you know, International Building Code, they're going to go back and they're going to, okay, look, we need to update this thing. Like people are getting hurt, people are dying. Um, insurance claims are needing to be made. And that's exactly why, you know, you're running into problems specifically with, let's say, the insurance company is saying, nope, you know, we need that updated. You know, nope, you need to, it's not up to, not up to snuff. We need you to improve that. All right, next slide. Um, all right, so cool thing about this property, uh, it already has some built-in amenities, which is great. Uh, so normally we're trying to go in and, and looking for different ways that we can optimize and create a, a, a better environment for the for the residents. Um, now this this particular property already has a basketball court uh, already on property. You know, basketball court needs a little love. You know, one of the hoops is down and uh, could stand to be resurfaced and kind of freshened up a bit. But the simple fact that it's there is huge. Um, on the right hand side, of course, you'll see the pool. Uh, which is another great amenity to be able to have, especially in areas like Texas, you know, where it gets super hot during the summertime, like this is going to be a huge amenity during the summertime, which is great. But, you know, that also means, uh, you know, things that they maintain. So that upper right-hand picture you'll see is uh, a picture of the stairs leading down into the property. Uh, this pool will need to be uh, at least resurfaced. Uh, but of course, you're looking for general condition of, you know, the pool. And this is, these are different things, of course, your inspector is going to look out for, but, um, you know, is it missing uh, tiles, you know, or do you see cracks running through the interior of the pool shell itself? Um, is there cracks in the coping uh, around the pool surround? Are there, are there cracks in the pool deck? Uh, like in this instance, the pool deck is going to need to be refinished. Um, okay, great. Um, you know, do you have proper lighting that's installed? Uh, how deep is the water? Uh, that kind of thing. You know, how does pool chemistry look? You know, is, is the water cloudy? Um, you know, because all those kind of things, uh, you know, if the, if the pool chemistry is off, that can cause, you know, skin irritation, you know, eye irritation, you're going to have residents that are going into unsafe water, you know, of course, you got to stay on top of all of that. And of course, you know, that leads to pool equipment, you know, to be able to maintain pumps, filters, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure that uh, all of that's up to, up to, up to spec, uh, up to snuff in terms of usability, functionality, safety. Uh, so it's a great, great amenity to have. Uh, as a resident, because you can charge higher rents, but you also, you know, need to factor in maintenance and, uh, you know, repairs and whatnot if it's needed. Um, the lower left-hand corner shows another amenity that we typically will will look to add because it's inexpensive. It adds a great uh, uh, point of of, of uh, benefit to the residents. Uh, that's going to be those little barbecue grills. You can see a couple of them installed there. Um, so there, these are already installed, which is great. And again, that's that's part of kind of a normal package that we'll usually do to go. Uh, in and, and upgrade the, the resident experience as be able to add some uh, amenities for the uh, to the, for the residents themselves, you know, add the barbecue grills and whatnot. So this is great that the property already has it. Right, next slide for me, dude. All right, so um, lower right-hand corner, this, that, this, you just see kind of the light, just kind of some of the neglect of some of this property. Like some of this stuff is not like major repairs, but you know, it looks obviously it looks really bad with that light that's falling down. Um, you know, and this is a should be an easy fix, but of course, like it just looks bad. You know, it just looks like the property is neglected and not taken care of. Uh, so there's you know stuff like that you want to be able to take care of and go knock out. Uh, same thing with that upper right hand corner. Obviously, this does not happen overnight. You know, of course, if it was an act of vandalism or something, yeah, you know that that could happen. But you know, this is an obvious you know dumping spot for uh, either on site. Um, and they're not, you know, utilizing this unit or, um, you know, this is an active spot for dumping, either illegal dumping from people outside of the complex or, uh, you know, residents themselves. And so, you know, it really kind of raises some question marks about what's going on. So do you need to increase security here? Do you need more lighting back here? Do we, you know, that kind of deal. Um, 
now you know in this instance it just looks like there's just random debris so um but uh, you know stuff like this we're obviously looking out for uh left hand uh, the two left hand pictures uh you'll see uh, something i noticed walking around the property and this ended up being probably the biggest uh or will be the biggest expense for this particular one is the um you'll see the little you know inconspicuous kind of access panel now anytime i see one of these access panels um i usually will find you know shut off valves uh, that kind of deal. That's usually when people will install those. Uh, what I don't typically see these installed though is in kitchens, you know, above a you know a kitchen countertop. So anytime I see something like this, I'm like, okay, what's going on with this? What what am I going to find behind here? Uh, especially when it's not obvious that there's there's no sink on this wall. <laughs> so uh, so uh, you know, I popped it open there just to find out what's going on. It's like, okay, well, this is a vent stack. Why do I need access to a vent stack? Well, come to find out. You know, talking to uh, you know the on-site maintenance guy. Well, the, you know the 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 complex, uh, the building itself has uh, plumbing issues, and you know there's just not enough room for cleanouts, and it's just you know uh, you know he's had to go in and do multiple kind of just patch repairs uh, because they've had you know ongoing plumbing issues, and so seeing just kind of random stuff like this, that access panel, knowing that that's not a normal spot where I see an access panel uh raises a good uh you know it's enough to raise uh, some question marks raise you know some red flags as to hey what's going on and you dig deeper of course it's a there's an underlying ongoing uh you know uh, major expense in dealing with plumbing issues uh, you know here i think most a lot of a lot of the houses on the island we've got it pretty good uh if you've got you know some type of a pier and beam foundation you've got a crawl space to be able to access plumbing uh, makes things a little bit easier if you've got to make plumbing repairs. Um, these, these, most of these properties out there are not built like that. Most, of, you know, a lot of properties in the mainland built, um, uh, you know, slab on grade. Uh, if that's the case and you've got plumbing run through the slab, well, if you got to jack through the slab to get access to those plumbing lines, that's a big expense. You know, uh, what we see a lot of times plumbing, you know, materials in general, not that expensive, but it's the labor involved in installing or replacing those materials. That will, that will, and you know, they could eat you alive. Um, so, you know, kind of getting uh, the most information that you can regarding these type of issues is is uh, is key. So, yeah, we we've definitely had to kind of dig a little bit deeper, find some more information uh, regarding like plumbing issues specific to this property. So, the preliminary numbers kind of put into context to to solve the plumbing issues at this property are um, right around nine hundred thousand. Um, is kind of where we're starting at to solve the plumbing issues here. So not, not something to be taken lightly. So that's, that's what looking at, you know, Hey, this little random access panel kind of opens the door to like, if you were to just kind of, Oh no, you know, you listen to the property. Oh no, everything's fine. <laughs> the sellers, you know, no, we're good. We don't have any plumbing issues. Yeah. To the tune of about a million, almost a million dollars. Yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. You got to pay attention to stuff like that. All right, next slide for me, dude. All right, so this is uh, this is a property that took me uh, further east. So this is a, a 59 unit, you know, uh, with some question marks uh, <laughs> property in uh, in Maryland. Uh, so this is on the East Coast, close to uh, Ocean City, uh, over in Maryland. Super cool, kind of beach, kind of town area. This is uh, maybe about 15 minutes away from there. Uh, this is a Matterport uh, uh, kind of a little intro one that I, I took a scan that I did of these units, or at least one of these units, uh, just to give you a better idea of kind of the layout of, uh, you know, of the, the overall uh, uh, rental units and just to kind of you can see condition and that kind of stuff. Um, I will do scans of these, you know, whenever I go out to, to go look at a property just because it's, it's better to be able to reference something like this after the fact. Um, this is just a little intro one, but I'm sure you guys have seen Kind of some of the virtual walkthroughs before. Um, it, it's great to be able to go in and look at look at after the fact. These are great for marketing. Um, we you know we'll we'll market. We use apartments.com as one of the channels to market our units. And of course, like this is something they include in some of their packages. Um, but you'll I'm sure you've seen that, especially with COVID. Uh, you know the the demand for this kind of stuff is just absolutely vital. So being able to be able to provide this to prospective tenants. Um, you know, even after the fact, after you kind of get things up and running, this is key. So also very important as project manager um, to do things like this. Um, so to be able to, especially if you're out of state, uh, to do Matterport scans, 
um, like a lot of us, be able to go hire somebody to do a scan and be able to get on a Zoom call like this and go through with the contractor every single room. Like, okay, this is the paint we're going to go through here. This is the light fixture we're going to go here. This is the vanity we're going to use. Um, you know, while we're 4,000 miles apart. So it's very, very powerful. Um, you know, at first you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to spend, you know, $500 or something um, to, to get a scan. Um, this tool here is is hugely uh, worth it because of just being able to do that. Like we're going to be able to jump on the call with our, our contractor for this. And at the end of an hour, have an entire project unit turn, you know, tier levels, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three built out with scope of work, with exact, um, you know, product codes from Home Depot that we're going to use for the light fixtures, for the paint, for the mirrors, for the vanities, for the toilets, for the, you know, door handles, everything picked out uh, to spec for this unit um, without ever having to hop on a plane, without ever having to go and have a meeting and sit down. We can all be done virtually. Uh, so we did our last two properties like this. Um, and, and again, back to that clarity, make sure everybody's on the same page. And I'm not assuming one thing and something got jumbled in communication and the contractor is assuming something else. And then you get there and you're like, this is not what I planned. And next thing you know, a like hundred grand sunk um, just because of miscommunication of what you know you thought uh, was going to happen. So these are very important for project management. All right. So here we get a little look at the exteriors of the properties. A um, couple of things here, lower left-hand corner, you'll see, you know, I mean, a lot of times it's kind of almost part of a acquisition package in terms of uh, CapEx is, you know, resealing of the, you know, the parking lot, the pavement, you know, fixing potholes. It does so much to be able to brighten up a property whenever you got, you know, this fresh looking uh, parking lot for the residents to be able to come home to be able to park the cars. You don't think it's that important, but, you know, re putting down new stripes, it just really brightens up the whole uh, appeal of the complex. So, you know, just kind of taking general note of that uh, here in that lower left-hand picture. Uh, uh, the top two pictures there, you'll see uh, kind of a bigger expense on this property is just how much woodwork um, that is uh, here on the site. You know, they have, uh, this is a walk-up, you know, buildings, uh, upstairs, downstairs, um, but there's just, you know, you've got decks and this is all actual wood. And so, you know, uh, uh, they had spent like 40 grand within the last year just doing kind of spot repairs, replacing boards, you know, you get wood rot, uh, loose boards. Uh, I think in one of the buildings, somebody had backed into, um, in the, you know, obviously there was this closer, parking lot was a little closer than, you know, than these ones here in the picture, but they backed into, you know, one of the posts. And so that kind of knocked it loose. And, you know, the property manager's like, again, you know, so it's obviously something that's happened before. Um, but it's just a lot to maintain. And so you want to kind of keep tabs on some of this. Um, and I don't think I, I may have included a picture in maybe one of the other slides, but um, the idea would be to, you know, if you can brighten up the look of this because there's so much woodwork, we can really change the look of the complex um, just by, you know, putting some paint. And that'll add a higher level of protection as well. You want to keep, you know, kind of exposed wood, any kind of wood exposed wood. Uh, it's going to last a lot longer if you're able to put down some stain, you're able to put down some paint. Uh, something that gives us some added protection uh, away from the, you know, the, the snow, the wind, the rain, the elements uh, in general that are really going to beat up that wood. Um, roofs at this property had already been uh, replaced. So those, those ones look pretty good as well. Um, and then probably the biggest expense or one of the biggest expenses here, uh, this complex, is that lower right-hand picture. So maybe a little tougher to tell from this shot, but you can see that window is not perfectly clear. You know, if you look at your windows, you look out outside, uh, you're expecting to see, hey, you know, it's a beautiful day in Hawaii. Um, I want to be able to see outside. Uh, you can see the haziness of this uh, window, and it's not just because the window's dirty. So these are dual glazed, uh, dual pane windows. Uh, so a couple of layers of glass, you know, that are sandwiching some gas. Um, so it acts as a great thermal insulator, uh, which is key in this kind of uh, climate because it gets really cold um, in this area. Uh, but also a great sound insulator. Again, you've got this big community. You want to be able to, you know, uh, provide some privacy for the residents. Um, so when you see this hazing, um, and a lot of times I'll see this is, you know, they'll start streaking. These windows will look kind of purpley hazy. hazy. That means the internal seals uh, at some point have failed on those layers of, gla of glass. And so what that's doing is allowing, you know, moisture and, uh, to kind of seep into these windows and they lose their, their thermal efficiency. 
Um, so just budgeting to have to change out these windows and so many of the windows of this property uh, were in this condition or far worse. Um, and you could see it, you know, the residents, you know, if you ask them, okay, hey, what's going on, you know, anything to complain about, you know, anything that's not worth, oh, the windows, you know, oh yeah, you know, these, these things are bad. Um, and so, you know, this is a significant expense uh, to be able to take on. So and you can see just across this building here alone, um, where you've got what, you know, six units, and you're talking about, okay, um, well, I've got uh, 12 windows just across the front. Well, you know, you, the building's gonna have a rear as well. So, you know, there's another 12 windows there. And so, you know, if you're figuring 900 to $1,000 per window, well, that, that can add up pretty quick. And so that's something that you need to know about going in, in, into a project, uh, into a property. And so, yeah, that was that was a, a significant expense that we were we were seeing on this particular one. All right, another uh, another expense here. Oh yeah, here lower that lower uh, left hand picture there. You'll see that's a that's one of the windows that was in much much worse condition. The lower left and the upper right hand corner. You'll see that's that's how bad they can get. Um, where I mean, you can't even see out of that window. That may as well just be a wall. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not seeing your kids playing outside. You know, uh, trying to look through those kind of windows. Um, so yeah, so you know these these were obviously in, in much much uh, worse condition than that first picture. Um, something else that we're going to have to take into consideration for this one is uh, exterior cladding, right? So uh, wall covering, uh, and for this particular property, they have vinyl siding. Well, vinyl siding's got a lifespan. Everything's got a lifespan. It's something you got to take into consideration is all materials have a lifespan. Everything's got a lifespan. Um, and this one, you know, we were already seeing damage. You can see that OSB uh, sheathing underneath um, uh, the lower right-hand corner. You'll see uh, that resident, obviously, to me, had a uh, barbecue grill. <laughs> well, you know, you got vinyl siding, uh, plastic melts. <laughs> you know, so you can see the warping and, you know, uh, the disfiguration that this siding is going to just because, you know, resident and, you know, 602 decides he wants to take full advantage of every uh, summer day uh, and barbecue out, out right in front of his unit on the grill. Okay, well, great. Then that just caused a bunch of damage here to, uh, uh, you know, to your exterior siding. Uh, in addition to causing a potential fire hazard on a deck made fully of wood. So uh, yeah, so something, something, to, something to take into consideration, uh, but this was definitely, uh, you know, something that I was keying in on uh, walking around the property. So this is, you know, a good point there with the whole barbecues, you know, people like to barbecue. So as a, as a manager, how do you solve that problem? Oh, that place looks great. Why don't we like that? That's next, that's across the street. Um, yeah. So as the, uh, so as a property manager, you know, how are you going to get people to stop barbecuing and stuff like that? Well, you offer them the amenity first, right? So like, oh, look, we just bent and built you this gazebo, this pergola, this, you know, barbecue picnic area over here where it's safe. The insurance companies like that, because if anybody knows insurance companies, you can't have barbecues within 10, 15 feet of a building. Um, they'll take a picture of it, send it to you and say, fix this now or we're going to cancel you, right? Uh, we've had that happen to us. Um, or just, you know, have their little charcoal grill right outside their door like this um, because of that stuff like that. So you build, a, you build the amenity for them, and then, then you can update the community rules and the lease is saying there will be no personal barbecues, things like that. Because if you do that first, right, now you have the management issue of like, oh, the new owners are coming in and, you know, they're, they're you know, being jerks and everything like that, taking away barbecues, stuff like that. So you offer them the, the new amenity first, then you can change the behavior and, and, you know, retrain them to use the amenity we offered in a safe location. Uh, and then, Tell them they can't have their barbecues. If you do it the other way around, um, doesn't really start that tenant landlord relationship off on a good foot. Uh, we we found that out. So we give them the carrot first over here, and then now we can update the community rules and the behavior uh, and get rid of those personal barbecues for issues like that. Because yeah, we we closed on properties and got letters in the mail from an insurance company. Hey, we did drive by and this guy's got his his grill out front, and uh, you better move that now. Um, it's within ten feet of the building. Um, and give you an idea of context on pricing I'm looking at now. So the, the upper end of the report on estimation for that siding, you know, those couple pictures that we saw, the, the siding upward about uh, 567,000 to reside that building. Um, the, all, all of them, there's, there's several. Um, and the low end about 305 on that one. And the windows, um, low end of 188,000, high end of 350,000. So these are expenses that, you know, a seller is often going to, and especially, you know, a broker, if the broker is representing the seller, is going to try to play down. 
like all oh, that that's nothing windows you look like i go on home depot right now they're you know 120 dollars a piece like no like when, once you get labor and everything like like steve said you're looking at you know five six seven maybe eight hundred nine hundred dollars a piece um to do it correctly uh obviously these ones were cheap and done incorrectly now because you know, they said how old were these like five years old or something yeah inside of 10 years for sure yeah. and uh you know they said they replaced some of these right so yeah, so clearly a window should a double pane modern vinyl window should not be failing in 10 years. So they went really cheap, installed incorrectly, and they're gonna try to play this stuff down. Um, that's why you gotta do your due diligence, get multiple bids out there, multiple inspectors, so um, multiple quotes you can bring, you know, bring the proof with you, the evidence that's just essentially makes it undeniable that there's an issue and it's gonna cost money. And if it's a material finding, meaning you didn't know about it before putting the offer in. Then you have grounds to retrade. Yeah, and and to Vince's point too, uh, some of you guys who live out in Eva, you may be experiencing that with your windows now. You know, some bro some brands that I personally have seen are just more prone to that. Uh, for even houses that are only, you know, three, four, five years old, uh, I think somebody mentioned earlier, like Milgard. Milgard is one of the windows that I personally have seen a lot of failure for a lot of houses out in Eva on top of Lake. Um, so there's something to keep an eye out. May have you looking at your windows a little differently. <laughs> you know, you guys, uh, you know, going out, going home. You know, like, oh, yeah, are my windows okay? Um, yeah, so th yeah, this shot, looking at this shot um, there. So this was a complex actually across the street. And you can see what a difference just brightening up some of that woodwork does. I mean, this just, just from a visual, uh, uh, you know, standpoint, you know, just putting, you know, fresh coat of paint down on, because uh, this, this building is not, you know, and it's not very dissimilar from, you know, the, that building we're just looking at, but just painting that, painting the wood, uh, you know, painting some of the trim, you know, the, obviously these ones are white and, you know, they put that nice rich, uh, you know, kind of brown or mahogany color, we'll just say, or, you know, just for, for fancification, uh, makes it look so much nicer. So doesn't that look so much more inviting than, you know, the previous shots, you know, you want to come home to this, I can charge, you can charge a premium for this building, literally just because they brighten up the woodwork. Yeah. Throw, yep. some, so, throw some shutters on there on those windows and it, it looks like a whole different place. Um, yep. Even though the base of it, it looks exactly the same, you know, beige, vinyl, yep. you know, say almost the same exact building. Um, just those couple little touches, very inexpensive, um, but it will completely change the curb appeal. Um, and if I was driving down the street and I looked left and looked right and there are two apartment complexes, you know, I'm going to the one on the left, right? Not, not the one on the right, um, just because of those little things like that. Yep. And you get, and it's going to extend the lifespan of your materials. And so, you know, that's definitely something oh, to take into consideration. All right. Uh, a left side picture, just some more discoloration. This is typically what I see on island. So, you know, like I said, if you guys are on island, for those of you that are, take a look at your windows. They may start look at this. I, I see this very frequently here uh, at a lot of houses out in Eva. Uh, they look almost exactly like that. They'll kind of pur purple haze and whatnot. So keep an eye on your windows. Um, right hand side there, some of these units did uh, actually put washer dryers in the unit. So they, they were, uh, you know, current ownership uh, was, you know, trying to upgrade some of the units. They put stackables, uh, you know, these, these buildings have um, like a crawl space type setup where you can fit in plumbing. You know, it's a little easier to get access to uh, plumbing and electric and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanted to make modifications, a lot easier to do it, uh, you know, if you have that type of foundation versus, uh, you, know, got, you know, got slab on grade. And, you know, it's going to be way more difficult uh, to be able to modify plumbing and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, the simple fact that they can fit this in there was huge. Uh, property manager was telling me they were getting like three, at least 300 bucks more a unit for having washer dryers and units. Um, now, I'm sure it's not specifically just for that, but it's the general condition of these units were a lot nicer. But that's a huge uh, amenity that you can add that you can get a premium for, you know, is it 300 350 bucks a door, you know, maybe not, but um, it will be significantly more than if you don't have, or you don't even have the opportunity to be able to add it. So that could be a significant um, uh, driver for income. All right, just another shot there. So looking at, um, so this is actually gonna be a significant value add opportunity. Um, this particular property, this is an upstairs downstairs uh, setup. This building was in particularly poor condition. Um, exterior, you kind of can't see it. I mean, I, I can see it because I've been there and, and just look at properties like all day long. 
Um, the, the woodwork on this property, like exterior decks were just, you know, uh, the slopes were just completely out of whack, um, need a lot of repair. Uh, the roof line, if you can kind of see it at that upper edge there, that kind of, how um, it's not smooth, it's not flat across, that's actually because you're missing chunks of shingles, your roof covering uh, across the top. So this, this property is gonna need, you know, a whole new roof, uh, lots of woodwork there on the front. Um, Definitely did not feel safe walking around there, but uh, uh, yeah, so this that's this one. But, um, I, and I think I have some shots in that one too. Uh, you wanna go to the next slide? Yeah, so this this one, I included some video there. Um, this property was just down to the studs. You know, once we walked into that property, you can see they'd already at least demoed it, which is great because you can get a better idea of, you know, what you're working with, um, you know, really without having to demo it up front. Now, it's work. <laughs> It's definitely not work, but at least, uh, you know, demo has been done and uh, you can get a feel for, uh, you know, hey, what kind of plumbing do I have? Where's the plumbing run? Um, you know, and this is where, you know, it helps to have, let's say, a designer or somebody come in who can uh, visualize that space uh, where there's currently no walls. OK, well, we need to be able to be able to picture this place, not only with some walls, but, you know, how we've got an upstairs downstairs set up you know what, let's fit in four units there because there's definitely the potential to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> so thinking a little bit outside of the box on that. This building, uh, there was a nonprofit and this is all part of the same complex, takes even more thinking outside of the box. Uh, the upstairs uh, has two rentable units that are already currently rented, but the downstairs and the portion on the right-hand side there with the kind of the gable roof, <clears throat> used to home a or house a, uh, a nonprofit organization. So they had a daycare on the inside, there's an elevator in there, but this property has been vacant and uh, uh, you know has gotten you know quite a bit of damage just from being vacant. A uh, properties deteriorate quite rapidly if there's nobody living in them. So that's just you do would think, hey, there's nobody in there to wear and tear it. Houses are made to have people in them. So plumbing needs to be run, electric needs to be used. Um, <clears throat> Uh, HVAC needs to be used. Um, if not, you just don't have the ventilation, you don't have uh, plumbing, you don't have things that are running that are, are designed to, to be so, um, they will actually deteriorate much more rapidly. Um, so, uh, you know, the goal here would be to actually convert this into at least five more rentable units, four across the bottom, uh, at least one more uh, at the top. Whereas right now, this is just one uh, <clears throat> defunct facility uh, that's just currently in poor condition, but the opportunity is there. And so to be able to, again, to be able to have eyes for that current ownership, either, you know, either they don't want to spend the money, they're not prepared to spend the money, don't have the creativity to spend the money. Um, this is where, you know, you as a, uh, as an investor can recognize that opportunity to be able to come in and make something of it. <clears throat> Yeah, and that, that's huge. Just to kind of recap with the last two buildings, because this, this site is, there's a couple, you know, different buildings um, across the property. So we have the opportunity, what was it, seven units is I think is what we were talking about that are, there's a two units that were complete down to the studs plus adding like another five units in this building. So that is huge. Um, when you're looking at an investment of, you know, buying a 57 unit and selling a, you know, a 60, you know, four unit, you know, on, on the back end, um, it is going to be a huge, huge play uh, if we decide to move forward on this property.